Bryce, I hear you. All right, how's it going? Bryce Willie here, back with another tutorial. This time we're gonna be getting into FL Studio. So I see in here a lot of debates, debacles about FL and how it's so complicated and it's dang near impossible to use and probably takes you like an hour to make beats. And I'm here to say that it's actually a really simple, easy program and DAW to use. It's got a few different ways and a few different workflows you can work with. So we're gonna get into the main two today. And I promise you by the end of this video, you'll be able to be pretty proficient in FL and use at least two workflows. So without further ado, let's get into it. So now the first thing I do when I open FL is I like to come up to this BPM and we're gonna change it. 130 is a little slow to me. I like to be in between 145 and 160. So we'll just, I don't know, we'll put it on 152, 152, that's fine. 153, that's fine. Now I'm gonna bring up these two main windows. It looks complicated. I know it's got a lot going on. We have our playlist and we have our sequencer. These are gonna be probably the two most important tools that you're gonna use when making instrumentals and working with FL Studio. The first method I'm gonna get into is the sequencer method. Now the sequencer method is good if you're gonna make beats from scratch and you're not really gonna use any samples or loops. So you're just gonna make all scratch and you're gonna make your own instruments and everything. Right here we can see on the side, we have all my drum kits. And then on this little plus sign is where you're gonna find all your instruments and your VSTs, okay? Now, if you don't know how to put VSTs into FL Studio and you'd like to learn, leave me some comments and I'll make another video to show you how to put all your VSTs and plugins into FL Studio. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna work in four bars. Only two bars are active. So what we wanna do is we wanna activate eight bars. I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna hit this last one and that's gonna activate it. How we know we're working with four bars is because we can see right here that we have counter red sets and to be in four bars, we need to have eight red sets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the first thing I do is let's open up an instrument. I'm just gonna use stock because you may not have what I have. And this is just if you wanna follow along. I found this new program called Flex. So let's start with Flex, right? We'll go to guitars and we'll go to this first one. I'm gonna make a quick guitar melody. So quick trick is you can just turn this little button on. If you don't have a MIDI piano, you can use your keyboard to, to sample. So like I'm gonna hit the R key on the keyboard. So I like that, let's exit out. Now what you wanna do is we're gonna right click and we're gonna go to the piano roll. Now here's our piano roll. So of course, I don't know if, if you used any DAW or made beats on any type of DAW, it's all pretty much the same. So we'll start with the C4s. So I'm gonna just drop some notes. Now be in mind, I'm gonna make a quick beat. This is not by any means to impress you or make a hit, it's just to show you. So now I just made a quick melody, you know, nothing crazy on our sequencer. So there's our melody, okay. Now what I like to do in Trap, this is everyone's favorite trick real quick. Basically what I like to do is we're gonna give this one. Now I'm not gonna use any of these, so we'll turn these off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go clone. I'm gonna clone that, and then I'm gonna go two. I'm gonna go control C, control V. We'll turn this off real quick. And now what I like to do is we'll open up the mixer. Now the way it works too is when you assign these tracks a number, it correlates to your mixer. So I have this on two, so that means that this is gonna be on mixer channel two. So now I'm gonna go to mixer channel two, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in a gross beat real quick. I'm gonna go momentary. So now we have. Okay, perfect. So now I'll EQ, we'll throw EQ, and we'll EQ the, some of the bass out. Give it a little boost. Now we're gonna copy this to one. So we'll play this, now what you have. I'm gonna come to our drums, I'm gonna give it a hi-hat. So let's go to our hi-hats. Perfect. And now, let's do our clap. So I like this one. So now we'll go piano roll. Now you can either put it with your claps, you can either put on every other next to the red bars, or what you can do, what I like to do is just go piano roll it. And on we're gonna go to our C5 because all of our sample notes are always gonna be on the fifth scale. And then we'll scale it, it goes on every third. So there we go, now look. Now our 808, just throw a quick 808 on there. Now in FL, when you're working with 808s, it's really important you wanna right click and you wanna hit this cut itself. So that way when the note's kinda long, and you put in a note, this keeps your notes from overlapping each other. So when you cut itself, if one note is playing, hits another note, it's not gonna let that note overlap. It's gonna stop that first note and let that second note play. Here, come over here on your sequencer. Right here. So right 
here again. Now why I like FL is because even though you're using the sequencer, you can kind of hear and see kind of where the notes need to go. Or you can go piano roll, and you can come into your piano roll and, and manipulate it on your piano roll as well. And look, there's your 808, nothing crazy, see? And now we'll go ahead and put a kick on top of it, just to give it some thump some extra thump, you know? Now what I like to do is just kind of go control C, control V, copy that. We'll go in here, maybe we'll take out the doubles on the kick. So now it'll just be. And then what I like to do to kind of wrap it up is just a nice little percussion. So maybe, you know, hit with one of these. So now like you're like, okay, I just made all my beat on my sequencer. I'm done. I want to pad that out. Like what's the next step, right? So now we just made our beat on our sequencer. You saw it didn't even take me 15 minutes to make a beat. Now, next thing we're going to do. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and delete all these because we're not using them. FL, FL normally just puts them there just to give you a starting point, but I like to clean up. So we'll clean up and that's my beat and we're done. So now how I'm going to do this right from your sequencer, you're going to come up here to your pattern and click this button and you're going to hit split by channel. And what it's going to do is. It's gonna make each thing that you made into its own channel. So now, this is the most important part. We had it on pattern for our sequencer. So now what we wanna do is, because we're gonna lay it out, we're gonna lay it out on the playlist, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna switch over to our playlist now. Now you see, so if I pull up this on the sequencer, you can see when you hit song, you have your little yellow. So that means when I hit play, it's not gonna play from the sequencer anymore, it's gonna play from the playlist, okay? So if I wanna go back up to the sequencer, we're definitely more welcome to do that. So now we're gonna put our song on song mode, okay? Now this is kind of one of the reasons why FL is kind of confusing and why people don't get it is because little things like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this out. I like to take that second one, kind of put it as my intro. We'll take this first one. This will be our hook. So a quick intro, we'll get straight to the point on this. So we're gonna put out our hi-hats, boom, boom. And we're just gonna go down the list until everything. So for my hook, I want everything to come in on the hook. Okay, so there's my hook, eight bars. Now, for my verse, we're gonna take this, take this, take this, and you know, just maybe for, for my verse, we'll say we're just gonna leave the, we'll leave the, uh, the main out of it. You know, we'll just use our, our half time one as the verse. So it's not as powerful so that we can use that for the verse and then use our main as the hook. We're just gonna copy all this over, copy the kick. There's a faster way to do this, but I'm just showing you. You know, you can hold down control, copy them over two at a time. Boom. So, so, yep. And then, boom. So there's our verse. Now I'm not going to put any hi-hats on that front, so you know. And then now look, all you got to do is just copy this over again. Copy the hook one more time. And now look, you have a beat. Perfect. So you got intro, hook, verse, hook, verse, hook. Right? Beautiful. So now that is what we call the sequencer method. Now I'm going to get into, we're going to get into the playlist method. Okay. So unlike the sequencer method where you, you know, you made everything off scratch off of your sequencer, you're going to go and we're going to go off of our playlist this time. So this is good for like, if you have samples or a loop or, you know, something that you're not making from scratch and you want to build a beat around, you're going to most likely want to use what's called the playlist method. Let's say you're on Splice or any type of website where, you know, you can get loops in and samples. So let's say, okay, I downloaded a guitar loop and, you know, I'll, I'm ready to make a beat with this loop I found on the internet, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to open it up, you know, we're going to drag our loop in. You're going to find the BPM at this loop, okay? I'm going to show you a cool trick to what you can do to find the BPM as well. So what we're gonna do is this looks like it's gonna be an eight bar loop. I don't really, let's say I don't really know the BPM and I don't have like a key software to figure out what the BPM is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it. Now, if it goes over five bars, that means most more than likely it's gonna be an eight bar loop here. Now it's not at eight bars. So that means when I dropped it and it's not filling up to eight at the end right here, that means it's off, B, the BPM is off. And to make the BPM, all we're gonna do is we're gonna move this until it's at the end of nine. So right now it's 153 and it fits right about nine. Now. Now you should have a good fit, okay? So 
now we're gonna come on the playlist. Or if you already know the BPM, and then before you even put it in, you're gonna go put the BPM at 153, because we know it was at 153. And now what we're gonna do, once you set the BPM, you're gonna drop your sample and it should just line up perfect. Okay, put it on pattern. You could also see too, like, <clears throat> if it lines up because you see these transients, transient is hitting right on the bar. Okay, well, how do we make drums and beats around it? With this method, you are gonna also use, be using the sequencer, but you're not gonna be building everything on the sequencer first. So, it's up to you whether you wanna make four bar drums or eight bar drums. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make another pattern, okay? So let's say, let's add some hi-hats and, and a clap, okay? So what you're gonna do is this right here, loop is on pattern one, right? So every time we make a new instrument or a new new clap or hi-hat or something new, we need to give it its own pattern. That way you're not putting everything on the same pattern, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to pattern two. It's gonna give me a blank box, right? And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this out to four bars. Now you gotta remember at the end of five is, is really the end of four bar and then it comes back again. So that's really four bars. So now what I can do is I can come over here and we're gonna play it. You know, maybe we'll audition for a hi-hat. We'll use this one. So I was like, okay, I like this one. So what you're gonna do, pattern two, make sure you're on another pattern and you're gonna hit all. And then you're just gonna put this on pattern two, okay? So now you can come at, bring it out and we can, you can, you could either go ahead and right click into the piano roll and do it that way, okay? Or what you can do is once you drag out your pattern two to four bars, double click and it will open up. We're doing hi-hats, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open these up and we're gonna go fill each two steps. So it does my hi-hats for me. So there's my hi-hat. So now, okay, I want a snare, you know what to do. New pattern, pattern three, that's gonna be my snare, okay? Now we'll go ahead and audition for a clap like that so same thing you know now you're gonna come over here go into the sequencer and you can right click into the piano roll or double click the box bring this back you're at five remember what we said about the snares on every one two and third that second bar second bar second bar second bar there's your claps same thing okay so you're like okay now it's time for the 808 okay now like what i like to do with the 808s now is we're gonna give it a new pattern. We're gonna go four. And now for the 808s, I'd like to give it all the way to nine. Now we can go up to our sequencer. Let's audition for an 808. Perfect, I like that. So now we're on pattern four, pattern four. This is our 808, let's double click. Let's go up to our five. Perfect. So you know, we'll go right here. Right here. We're gonna go cut itself so the notes don't overlap. Now we can do something cool like this. And then you know what I can do is just come over here and then copy it over and then just give it less variation. So for right here, we won't put that one, we won't put this one, and then we'll just put these at the end instead. So we'll go right here to right here, and then, you know, just something, just whatever works for you. And let's copy these over. And so now we'll go ahead and put in our kick. Just give it a little more thump, pattern five. Dang, boom, we're gonna lay out pattern five. I'll only do four bars, or we'll do eight and copy the 808 pattern. So, you know, the same thing. So I was like, okay, I want, let's just put in, you know, let's let's close it off with a percussion. And the same thing, you know, kind of do like a, you know, in that pattern, you kind of do like an off pattern, which I kind of like. So now that you're done, what you should do is you go, should go ahead, go down the list and just mark all your instruments and everything you used, okay, into the mixer. That way, when you're done, you can mix your beat a little better. You know, so mix the beat a little bit, and then now, you know, same thing. Now you got, now you got the same thing. So now, we'll pad this out. So now we can go like, okay, we want that first five, four bars for our intro. We'll bring this over. You can hold shift, let go of shift, bring this over. Now what I'm gonna do real quick is just cut this off for our intro, and then we'll bring this back up for our hook. And you know, same thing now, different variations, however you wanna do this, and however you wanna lay your beat out. So we'll take that off, there we go. And then now, same thing. I know you're like, oh, it's kinda laying out weird, but it's all right, you just gotta fill these in, no problem. And then now back to your hook right here, and we're just gonna put that right here. Maybe we'll take this hi-hat pattern back a little bit so you know, give us a little indication that the hook's coming back in, and now, now you got a beat. 
Hopefully now you know how to use both methods and you're proficient in FL. If you have anything that you feel like I didn't go over, you want to learn more about or see, please leave it in the comments. Thank you. Hit that subscribe and have a good day.